Get busy living or get busy dying. The immortal words of the legendary Stephen King, the man responsible for some of horror fiction's most magnificent works. But when it comes to horror cinema, the silver screen adaptations of some of his classics have always been a metaphorical coin toss. On the one hand, King has given birth to an entirely unique genre of cinema. A Stephen King movie is a term synonymous with a very particular style of horror movie, but sometimes they've been horrifically lost in translation. I mean, just watch The Mangler if you dare and you'll see what we mean. Forget that though, because what we're interested in is the cream of the nightmare crop. Hello horror fans and welcome back to the scariest channel on YouTube, Top 5 Scary Videos. As per usual, I'll be your horror host Jack Finch, so come with me now and join my quartet as we curiously take a look at the Top 5 Scariest Stephen King Movies. Roll the clip. For the curious amongst you, that scene was from the 1979 TV miniseries Salem's Lot, directed by Toby Hooper. And unfortunately, although it doesn't exactly qualify as a full movie, it still deserves some recognition. So, yeah. There you have it. Toby Hooper also directed an adaptation of King's The Mangler, which is so, so terrible. But he gave us the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, so he's forgiven. Forever. Cheers, Toby. Kicking us off at number 5, 1408, 2007. No. It's the prospect of something after death. How many spirits have you broken? And while it may not be one of King's most memorable works, it is most definitely a demonstration of why his horror translates so well to the silver screen. King has the uncanny ability to literally breathe life into his characters, capturing their flawed sense of humanity. And the oftentimes underwhelming John Cusack actually delivers that incredibly well through his performance in 1408. Directed by Mikael Hafström and released in 2007, 1408 tells the tale of Mike Enslin, a cynical author and pseudo-paranormal investigator investigator who takes up the task of staying in the most haunted room in the most haunted hotel in New York City after receiving an ominous message stating don't enter 1408. Well, yeah, we know how that goes, right? Given the fact that 90% of this film takes place in relatively the exact same setting, the plot is so damn intriguing and unnerving that we never really get the chance to take notice. Although it kind of went under the radar, 1408 received incredible praise for its uncanny handling of the paranormal in what is essentially a cut and shut haunted house story. Of course, it's a Stephen King movie, and of course, it turns out to be so much more. Also, there's like four alternate endings for this film, and three of them are pretty damn harrowing. Next up at number four, Misery, 1990. Have you all got amnesia? They just cheated us. This isn't fair. He didn't get out of the cock a duty car. Not only did 1990's Misery deliver as one of King's most insanely terrifying characters, it also cemented itself as the only King adaptation to date to ever receive an Oscar, bagging Kathy Bates' performance, the 1999 Academy Award for Best Actress, in her role as a psychopathic Annie Wilkes. And if you've ever seen Misery, you'll know exactly why she deserves that award, because holy moly, she's incredibly convincing as a psychopathic, sledgehammer-wielding number one fan. In fact, the reason that Misery is so damn scary is because it cuts so close to the bone. It's real. People like Annie Wilkes exist. And that is so much more impactful than a demonic laundry press. Yeah, it goes without saying really. Sorry, the mangler. Directed by Rob Rayner with an adapted screenplay by William Goldman, Misery tells the story of Paul Sheldon, a famed novelist and author of a successful romance series featuring a character named Misery Chastain. Paul has a near fatal car accident when caught in a winter storm, and who saves him? None other than Annie Wilkes, who just so happens to be Paul Sheldon's number one fan. And we know what happens next, don't we? I'll never look at a sledgehammer and a wooden block the same way again. Swinging it at number three, Carrie, 1976. Everyone in bed, mama, everything in the sin. Come to your closet and pray, ask to be forgiven. He's a nice boy, Mom. You like him. You really like him, Mama. I'm just going to come out and say it. Carrie is so good that it could qualify as many, many different things, not just a terrifying horror movie. The amount of themes that are crammed into this film, carried by Sissy SpaceX, incredible, incredible performance, is oftentimes breathtaking. And the fact that Stephen King's wife, Tabitha, pulled this manuscript out of the trash after King himself had thrown it away is one of literature's greatest vindications. Because not only did we get King's debut 
novel, we also got one of his most incredible silver screen adaptations. Directed by Brian De Palma, the film stars Sissy Spacek as Carrie White, the 17 year old high school student who is frequently the butt of some awful practical jokes at the hands of her peers. Well, turns out Carrie has got some untapped telekinetic powers that's been hindered and kept at bay by her fanatically religious mother, Margaret White, played by the awesome Piper Laurie. There are so many iconic scenes in 1976's Carrie that it's sometimes hard to catch your breath, but that's exactly what King and later Brian De Palma intended. Start to finish, Carrie is the onslaught of a teenage girl who just about had enough of people telling her what to do. And it's awesome. Coming in at number two, The Mist, 2007. I'm not going to lie, 2007's The Mist makes my number two spot for, well, two reasons. Frank Darabont and the ending of this film. It goes without saying, but Darabont is perhaps the only commercial director that has ever truly captured the essence of Stephen King's work after being responsible for both 1994's The Shawshank Redemption and 1999's The Green Mile, which would have made this list if not for the fact that they're tearjerkers instead of horror movies. Yeah, I'll cry every time that John Coffey says he's afraid of the dark. Every damn time, without shame. Directed by Frank Darabont with a screenplay adaptation from the man himself, The Mist, although a monster movie in truth, manages to perfectly encapsulate the horror of humanity, exploring the central themes of the lengths that ordinary people will go to under extraordinary, horrifying circumstances. As in, a town full of terrifying, vicious Lovecraftian monsters that are hidden behind a strange, unnatural mist. Also, Thomas Jane is so bloody good in this film, it's hard not to love it just for that fact. Also. Side note, Thomas Jane is awesome in anything. The fact that the ending to this film shocked even Stephen King himself says so much about The Mist and Darabont's interpretation takes the horror of small town living to a whole new level. And finally at number one spot, The Shining, 1980. Which may in actual fact be a bit of a controversial number one pick, given the fact that Stephen King himself absolutely hated Stanley Kubrick's cinematic adaptation of his novel, so much so that King is still incredibly vocal about why he hates it so much to this day. It kind of pains me to Judas, my man King like that, but this is all about the horror movies, and The Shining is an undeniable, absolute masterpiece of cinematic history and a master class of building atmospheric dread on the silver screen. Written and directed by the legendary Stanley Kubrick, there's not much more that I could say about 1980's The Shining without giving it the credit that it deserves. Like, where do we even begin? Jack Nicholson's performance, which is perhaps the most terrifying on-screen depiction of the human mind descending into madness, the pure terror of a home in rapture captured on a knife's edge by the incredible Shelley Duvall, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. Red Rum, the near heart attack inducing Grady Twins, the elevator full of blood, the fact that this film is now such a cultural icon that is connected to a myriad of conspiracy theories including Kubrick's fake moon landing, and I don't really know where to begin or end in regard to The Shining. It's horror cinema at its finest. End of story. Well there we have it horror fans, our list for the top 5 scary Stephen King movies, why don't you let us know your picks in the comment section down below. Before we depart though, all work and no play does make Jack a door boy, so let's read out some of your more entertaining comments from over the past few days. First up, Ayo Akinsuku says, where would I be without your channel Jack, awesome job as ever, if you ever wanted to start in a horror movie sequel, which would it be? Well Ayo, thank you so much for the kind words, we'd be nowhere without awesome horror fans such as yourself though. So. Cheers buddy. That's also a great question and I'll probably change my mind at some point, but I won't mind taking up the chainsaw hand and taking on some deadites in Evil Dead. Either that or a sequel to Dog Soldiers, that'd be fun. I could fit that. And finally Hannah Lindsay says, Ikea manuals narrated by Jack Finch. Damn straight Hannah Lindsay, coming to a store near you. I'm just kidding, that is a different kind of horror show. No one should be tortured by theoretically assembling Ikea furniture. That's just a shelf too far. Well, on that horrifying no horror fan, cheers for sticking around all the way until the end. If you're a fan of this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button as well as that subscribe bell, and we'll be seeing you in the next one. As per usual, I've been your horror host, Jack Finch. You've been watching top five scary videos, and until next time, you take it easy.